when writing unit tests, you need to focus at the unit at hand and not dealing with other dependencies like services or variables. And the way to accomplish that is by using some mocking framework. There are many in .NET, but my favorite, and it's by far the best, is Unsubstitute. It's easy to use, lightweight, and open source. So let's check it out. Let's say I need to test this service. I need to create a unit test to test register user async method. I'm passing email and password and performing some stuff in there that I need to test. User service is dependent on different services, different interfaces, iValidator, iUser repository, and iPassword hash. And inside register user async, you can notice that we are doing some validation. If it's not valid, we are throwing exception. We are checking if the email exists using a repository. We are hashing a password, and then we are saving the user to the database, the email with the hashed password, and we have a try catch, and we are throwing a custom exception inside the repository, and we have some custom logic where we are returning null if the exception occurred, and we are returning user ID, which is liquid. Okay, so there are plenty of dependencies, but let's get started to see how we can actually perform a unit test using unsubstitute. So first thing, we need to install unsubstitute. So search for unsubstitute and install it in your test project. Once installed, let's go and create our first test. If you are enjoying this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a like, and consider subscribing to my mailing list. It is in the description below. So let's create a fact. I'm using XUnit. You can use MSUnit, test, or any unit, anything. It's the same thing. So public, it will be a task register user with valid email should return a user ID. I like using this naming convention for my test, so it's easy to understand and to know what the test will do for us. Okay, so if I need to create a user service, okay, so var service equal new user service, you will notice that you need to have a validator, user repository, and password hasher. And, and substitute will allow us to create substitute for this kind of interfaces. So let's say var validator, equal. So to create a validator, it's simply by typing substitute. You need to insert using and substitute here. Substitute for, and you specify the type of the interface. Let's create another one for the user repository. Substitute for I user repository. And same thing for the password hash. And now, in my service, I can simply create using user repository and password hash. Now, I have an instance of a service class that I can use to perform the test. Also, I like to have my test separated with the three A's, a range, act, and later on assert. So we need an email, we need a password, so password, and then we can start acting. So var user ID equal service dot register user async. We can specify email, password, okay? So let's go back to the user service. You'll notice here that we need first to validate. So our test now is to check if we have a valid email and password, we should return a user ID. And the way to do that is we need to prepare our substitute class, our validator substitute, to return true if we are passing an email to the method is valid email. Same thing for is valid password. And the way to prepare that is doing something like this. 
validator dot is valid email. If you specify an email, we need to return true. Same thing for the password. So validator is valid password, password, return true. And the good thing about and substitute, you can here specify a different type of argument. Let's say it's not only about password. You can specify any argument of type string. So you can say arg dot any string, or maybe you want arg dot is, and you can specify what is it exactly. But for now, let's have password. So in that case, Validation here, it's true, password is true, and then we need to also prepare the user repository for email exist async. Same thing, let me do that very quickly. So email exist async should return false. And we need also to prepare a hashed password because the hasher should return a hashed password in that case. So same thing, let's create a variable. So string hashed password equal hashed and then password hasher dot hash password password should return hashed password so inside our service whenever the i password hasher instance call hash password method with an argument is equal exactly to password you should return this hash password, which, which is this variable. And then the last part is user repository dot save user async email and hashed password should return. Here we need to return a new ID. So let me create a GUID ID equal GUID dot new GUID and return the ID. Okay, now for the assertion part, we can say something like this. Assert first, user ID is not null. So not null user ID. And we need assert dot equals expected is ID. And the actual one is user ID. We need to have a wait here so we can return the user ID, not the task. So we assert the user ID and we can assert that our interfaces, our instances did receive some calls. So we can say user repository dot received one save user async arg dot any string and arg dot any string. So what we are saying here, we are saying that, yeah, let's do a wait here. So we are saying we need to assert that user repository received at least one saved user async. And now let's run the test. If we run the test, it will succeed. Everything is working as expected. You need to notice something. If you don't prepare the data of a method, it will return the default value for it. So let's say is valid email is boolean if we don't prepare it, it will return false. So if we do this one, if we if we don't uh, prepare this valid email and we run the test, we should fail because is valid email didn't return true and it returned false. So we have invalid email exception. Okay, so let's try to create another test, which is we need it to be failed. We need to give it a invalid email and we need to have it uh, throw an exception. Okay, similar to the one that we did just now. And to do that, let's create another test. So with invalid email, we need to throw argument exception. And let me copy a few things from the arrange. Okay, so you can, if you have multiple unit tests inside your, your file, you can move that outside of the method itself and you can use it as a shared one inside the class. But for now, it's fine. Let's prepare the validator. So validator dot is valid email. Email should return. In that case, should return false. So we are 
not receiving an email. And then we can do an act and assert, await, assert.throw async. We can specify argument exception and service.register user async email password. Okay. So in that case, it will run this one. It will perform the act and it will assert that it is going to throw an exception and you can assert anything else here. Assert others. Stop. Let's run the test. It succeeded because if we return false, it will throw argument exception, which is cool. Now, yeah, later on, you will add more tests. We can cover a lot of scenarios here. You can add a test for valid email, valid password, email exit, etc. But now let's try to validate the following. Let's try to actually prepare save user async inside the repository to throw a custom exception. To do that, let's create a new test here as well. I'm going to copy everything, email password. Let's prepare the validator, the repo. Yeah, the email exists one and the hash password. And then I need to prepare the user repository when saving the user to throw an exception. And you can do that by doing user repository dot when repo repo dot save user async email password. So our user repository when we are calling save user async. I need you to do in that case throw custom new custom exception. And now we can do var user ID equal await service dot register user async email password and we can assert that is null user ID because the logic that we have here is that we are returning null when we are receiving this exception. Let's test this out. So I renamed the method to fail user creation returns null. It failed because we are passing password here and we should pass the hashed password. So you notice here, we prepared user repository to only send an exception when we receive email and password. But the fact is this should be a hashed password because to prepare save user with a hash password to throw the exception. So if we run the test now, everything succeeded. Okay. There are plenty of things that you can do with a substitute. You can check the documentation. I will put the link in the description below. And that's it for me, guys. You can check my other videos here and here. And let me know in the comment below what type of testing framework are you using and if you are going to use and substitute or not. So till next time. Bye.